These are the 2.2a notes. This is all about solving systems by elimination. So yesterday we talked about how to solve systems by graphing, and this is just going to be a different method. So let's just refresh. What is a system of equations? That is just two or more equations solved together. Two or more equations solved together. So you have options of how you solve these. So there are three different ways we can solve systems. Um, this is the second way. Graphing was the first. So this method is nice when you don't have graph paper and when your x's and y's and equal signs are lined up. So here's what I mean by that. Notice here your x's are lined up, your y's are lined up, your equal signs are lined up, and then you have this number at the end. In this situation, elimination is the best way to solve. Okay, so here's what elimination is. You've probably done this before, but it may have been a while. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the x's and we're gonna look at the y's. And if any of them are the same number but opposite signs, okay, same number, opposite signs, Right, one's a plus, one's a minus. Same number, opposite signs. Then they cancel. Same number, opposite signs, cancel. So on our first example, we actually are ready to cancel out immediately. Notice your 3x and your negative 3x. Without doing anything, those are going to cancel up. So we're going to add these two equations together. And 3 minus 3, or 3 plus negative 3, gets me 0. Those are gone. Then I'm going to combine my y's. I'm going to put a 1 right there. 1y plus 4y, 5y. Then I'm going to add the 9 with a 6 to make 15. After that, you should only have one variable left. And then you just solve it like you would a regular equation. Divide both sides by 5. You get y equals 3. If you remember back to the graphing, our answers were ordered pairs, x, y. So all we have so far is a y value. We're going to need to make sure then we find the x value. In order to do that, you go back to one of the original equations that you were given, and you just plug in a 3. So I'm going to go ahead and use the top equation. 3x plus y equals 6. Now I'm just going to plug my 3 in for the y. 3x plus 3 equals 6. Then you solve. Divide by 3. X equals 1. So you're going to want to write your final answer as an ordered pair. Put the X first, 1, and the Y second, 1, 3. Let's take a look at our second example. For our second example, when I look at my numbers, I look at the X's. Those are not the same number so I can't cancel them. I look at the y's. Again, not the same number, so I can't cancel them. So then I'm kind of stuck. So what I'm going to need to do now is find a number that either the x's or the y's have in common, and I'm going to kind of force, change the equations in order to become those numbers. So let's focus on the x's this time. I have a 2 and a 5. When I think about 2 and 5, I know they both go into 10. So I could change both of these into 10s. I'm going to change this top one into a 10 by multiplying by 5. 5 times 2 will get me the 10. Now on the bottom, I'm going to multiply the bottom by 2, getting me an answer when I multiply of negative 10. And remember, if they are the same number but opposite signs, they will cancel. So now I'm going to distribute. Distribute across the top all the way out to the end. And same thing at the bottom. 
There's a lot of numbers here, so make sure you're working really carefully and watch out for any negatives. I'll do the top one with you and I'll let you try the bottom one. At the top, 5 times 2x is 10x. 5 times negative 3y is negative 15y. 5 times negative 12 is negative 60. Go ahead and try to distribute the bottom. And then we'll kind of compare answers. So check your answer with mine, negative 10x plus 2y equals negative 18. Now, this is good because notice your x's here, 10x positive and 10x negative. Those can cancel out. When those cancel out, I'm going to combine my y's, negative 15y and positive 2y combined to make negative 13y. Then negative 60 and negative 18 combined to make negative 78. Last step, divide out the negative 13. Those cancel. And 78 divided by 13. Type that into your calculator. you should have gotten a two answer of six. All right. Now, remember on each one of these, we still need to find the other variable. So even though we found y for this one, it's important that we still find x. So I'm gonna go back here to my original equations and I'm gonna get rid of some of this stuff so it's not in the way. And we have options. We can either plug it into the top or into the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and just to show you guys, I'm going to plug this into the top, even though I think it's a little easier to plug it into the bottom because I just have a Y there. But just to show you, I'm going to plug it into the top one. So I have 2X minus 3Y, but my Y is 6. So I'm just going to put it in a parenthesis like that. Equals negative 12. Two 2X, then I multiply. And then you solve. See if you can solve that problem. You should have added 18. To get 6. And divide by 2. To get 3. When you're done with X and Y, make sure you write your final answer as an ordered pair. X comes first, Y comes second, the ordered pair X, Y. All right. One more example here. So for this one, I'm just going to focus on changing one of the numbers. Um, you could change the y's just like we did with example number two. Um, multiply the top by three and the bottom by five. I'm going to do mine a little bit differently. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get the x's to be the same but opposite signs. So what I'm going to do is I'm thinking, okay, two and four. I know that both those numbers can go into four. And that way all I have to change is this top number. I'm going to multiply it by two so that way it's a four. And then I'm going to make sure that I put a negative out front here. That way when I multiply it in, I get a negative 4, which will help cancel with that positive 4 underneath. All right, let's distribute. Negative 2 times 2x, negative 4x. Negative 2 times 5y, negative 10y. And then negative 2 times negative 22 gets me positive 44. For this bottom, 
equation. I'm just going to copy it over. I'm not going to change anything at all. And notice now how you have the same number but opposite signs for the x's. That's what we were going for. So I cancel those out. Combine the negative 10 and negative 3. Combine the 44 with the 8. And then divide by negative 13. You should get y equals negative 4. So once we have our answer for y, you know exactly what to do. For this one, again, neither of these are great options as far as what to plug into it. Neither of them have a y by itself or anything. So I'm going to go for the top one here, 2x plus 5 times negative 4 equals negative 22. Two x plus negative twenty. I'll just go ahead and turn that to a minus twenty equals negative twenty two. Take a few seconds and solve that problem for x, please. All right, you should have come to an answer of x equals negative 1. So then, write your answer as an ordered pair, please. Negative 1, negative 4. Okay. So we're going to apply the same method, and we're going to do a couple story problems. So when we write the story problems, all of our story problems are going to end up looking just like these type of problems here. Example four, you are the owner of an ice cream shop. You charge $3 for a single scoop cone and $4 for a double scoop cone. Yesterday, you made $271 and sold 81 cones total. How much of each cone did you sell? So this would be important, of course, on a grander scheme, uh, a bigger picture here. But if you were going into business, if you're planning on going into business, you need to keep stock of all your inventory and how much money you're selling and what items are selling. So this is just kind of like a small, very tiny version of that type of problem that you would need to solve if you owned your own business. So we're going to start by collecting all of kind of the like things. So we've got money here, money here, and money here. We're going to write that as one equation, 3x plus 4y equals 271. Now, when I go to write my second equation, I notice that there's only one number left here. So what that means is I'm just going to write x plus y, no numbers in front of it, equals 81. That's my system of equations. And then I'm going to solve this the same way I was solving all of them. See if you guys can figure out what you would need to multiply in order to get either the x's or the y's to cancel. There's a couple different things you could do, but I'm actually going to multiply the bottom one by negative 3. That'll help me get my x's to cancel. Once I've decided to do that, you just copy over this top pink equation, and then you distribute the negative 3 to the bottom equation. I'll give you a moment. Go as far as you can.
Okay, so you should have come to this point. Then we're going to cancel out the x's because you have a positive and a negative of the same number. And combine what's left. 4 combined with negative 3 is 1y. 271 minus 243. I'm going to have to do that on my calculator. Okay, that got me 28. Then you can either divide both of these by 1, or if you realize that 1y is the same as y, you can just go ahead and get rid of that, and then you have your answer for y. So y actually was our double scoop, if you remember over here, we put our 4 next to our y, and our 4 was for our double scoop. So let's just make a little note that we had 28 double scoop cones. Now to find your answer for x, you're going to plug it back into either the top or the bottom of these original problems in the pink and the blue. If I'm looking at the pink equation or the blue equation, to me the blue equation looks a lot simpler. So I'm going to go ahead and plug my math in there. All right, so we'll do x plus my answer for y was 28. So I'm literally taking my 28 and plugging it in for my y equals 81. That's a pretty straightforward equation to solve. So grab your calculator, subtract 28 from both sides, and you'll have your answer for x. All right, you should have gotten 53, and that's going to be your single scoop cones. All right, so we've answered that question, how much of each cone did you sell? You sold 53 single scoop and 28 double scoop. All right, let's look at one more problem. I'm going to let you guys try to set this one up. I'm not worried about solving it, but I'm mostly just worried about you guys setting it up. If you can set it up, then we're in good shape. All right, your school is planning a trip for 226 members. A bus holds 70 people and a van holds 8 people. The bus will cost $280 to rent, while the van is only $70. The school has a budget of $980. How many buses and vans should be rented? So I'll give you a little clue here. One of these equations is going to be all about money. The other equation is going to be all about the people. See if you can write two equations, please. Money and money and money. Make sure your total, the school budget, goes at the end of the equal sign. All right, I'm going to call the bus X, just because they mentioned the bus first. And I'm going to call the van Y, and it has a total budget equal to 980. If you haven't had a chance to do the people one yet, go ahead and try. I've got your numbers here. See if you can put that together in the right place. So 70 people on the bus. Remember, we called the bus the X plus 8 people in the van equals your total of 226 members. All right, those numbers are pretty big. So for today, we're just going to go ahead and call that our answer. We're not going to actually solve it all the way through. Uh, we've already solved enough all the way through. Just make sure that you're able to write those equations on your own. 
All right. Really good job today. I know that was a lot, but thank you for paying attention and watching this video the whole way through. Hopefully it'll help. If you have any questions, you always just let me know. Or remember, I'm on Google Meets every Friday to help you out. Nice job today.